I met Martin at the uh, No Small Creator Group and we decided to do a co collaboration day. And after that we'll be making a photo challenge, but that would be, you know, separate videos. Welcome back guys, we just arrived in Nuremberg. I'm gonna grab something to eat and we'll start the photo challenge. If you haven't watched the first part of my collaboration with Jonas, check out the links, I'm going to include it in the description and above. Speaking of Jonas, here he is. Yes. So we're about to start the photo challenge. It's going to be a mirrorless versus a DSLR challenge with some limitations which are inspired by shooting with a film camera mainly and the goal is to produce five shots each that we'll pick and upload to Instagram for you guys to to judge and then we'll pick the winners based on so yeah you vote in the comments uh, which is your pick and we'll announce the winners from all the categories the topic is going to be mainly street photography and we'll have five categories one shot of a person or multiple uh, people one shot of a building one shot showing some kind of movement an abstract shot and one personal favorite which does not fall into the rest of the categories also will be limited to only 24 shots in total so we have to really think and uh, count our shots <laughs> So yeah, um, I'm going to use the mirrorless GH4 um, and I'm probably going to change my lens, which is probably... Either I'm going to use this one, which is a 16mm 1.4, or I'm going to use my Nifty 50, which is actually a 25mm 1.7. Sigma lens and the other one is... It's a Lumix lens, it's a like Lumix one lens. of the generic ones. I think it's the cheapest one you can get for the camera lens. Yeah. Okay, so I'll be using the Nikon D5300 uh, and I'll be using not that expensive lenses. 18-205 by Nikon, the 35-1.8 by Nikon, as well as the 51.8 from Nikon. Uh, these are my choices for street photography in general and the, the cool thing about them is that they're not that expensive. Yeah, and uh, this is the lens I'm probably going to use. This is the 25 1.7mm. So, yeah, may the best photographer and mirrorless or DSLR camera win. One thing we forgot to mention is we're making this challenge here in the uh, old city of Nuremberg and we also have a two-hour limit to make this. Really interesting because we, we fell into this full on competition mode. There were times where we quietly walked like a few meters apart and tried to get the best shot and then somebody have, has found a good place and basically tries to be as discreet as possible to not let the other one know that um, they found a good spot. So we just 
finished with a photo challenge. Shit. We did it in like an hour, definitely quicker than we thought. And uh, one thing I noticed is that 24 frames is too little. We are blessed to have digital cameras today and take all the shots that we want. But my personal opinion, I feel quite good from uh, this photo challenge. I think I have interesting shots for each category. So, how do you feel about the challenge, Jonas? Uh, I feel good. I was skeptical at first because of the 24 shots, but now after I've done it, it, it definitely feels good. I've, I've got some cool shots and I'm positive. So what's left is to go home, edit the photos, and we'll let you guys decide who won in each category on our Instagram profiles. You're gonna see them somewhere over here. I'll put the names uh, and also links in the description. So, since um, Jonas had to leave back for Frankfurt, he sent me a video with a description about his shots, why he chose them, how he made them, and what he learned from uh, uh, from the photo challenge. Uh, and uh, after you, you see uh, you see what he has to say, I will share with you the, the same information from my perspective. I really liked having this limitation of 24 shots. It really drove me to be more creative or think more about my shots and in the end result drove me to having more results I could use. The only shot I didn't really like was the movement shot. I think I could have done a little bit better with that. So the first shot I did of a person was, was basically just a lucky shot. I had my camera like this, I had it in um, aperture priority mode and I just like took it out of the hip, I saw this interesting person and I thought man that could be a good photo, let's try it and just like had my camera up here and shot him, like took a photo of him, didn't shoot him. Hello darkness my old Yeah, basically it looked interesting to me, I knew I had an, uh, an aperture priority and so my aperture was on 1.7 wide and I, I just um, hope that I get a good shot and it worked out. Sometimes you have to have a little bit of luck. The second shot um, was of a building. I had another shot before, but then I saw this this building with all these, um, with this interesting roof, basically. The only thing I did in the edit was um, like make it black and white. I think it, it looked better like this. So for the movement shot, I tried to go with um, a long exposure. I did succeed, I had my ND filter, uh, locked my aperture to the smallest one, no, the smallest aperture, like the biggest number I could get, like 22, and waited for a car to come around. I don't think I, I really did this shot well, but um, there wasn't any alternative and I think it, it came out fine. Uh, the next shot is the abstract one and I worked with mirroring. I saw this, this building, Martin showed me that he had taken photos of this building before and said that's why he doesn't want to take photos again. I don't really know why. Because I didn't want to cheat. He would have had an advantage. He didn't want to. Now I did it and, and I saw this, this curved, like all glass front building and it, um, it had a mirroring effect in my camera and I I remember this, uh, these photography hacks you, you see in all these uh, videos with holding your, your phone under the lens to get another mirroring and I did that and then I made it a really contrasty black and white photo and that's basically the, the abstract thinking and I really like this photo because I think it looks pleasing from the, from the composition and it looks interesting because you really don't know what's going on. So I think I, I um, nailed the abstract one. And the last one I wanted to talk about is my personal favorite. It was this really long hallway in like a mall and I, I just basically walked back as far as I could and had this perfect leading line um, leading towards the, the entrance, which um, I, I got really close down to the ground and waited for the doors to open to have the entrance exposed basically and you could see out on the street. So you have this this really dark uh, environment more with you see the leading lines leading towards the the entrance and I really like the, the whole composition and basically what I 
what I did in the edit was align it so the um, the composition is really exact and I think I, I darkened the whole place a little bit up and brightened the, the entrance and that's basically what I did. Yeah, so um, in the end I liked the photography challenge. I'm not the greatest photographer but um, it, it helps like having these these limitations of 24 shots. We talked about doing 36 but it felt a little bit too much and in the end it was really interesting to, to do the photography challenge in, in Nuremberg because I haven't been there in a long time. Check out my YouTube and Twitter one but Martin said that more than enough so I think you'll find me. Bye! Uh, so, for my first shot, I have my photos over here on my phone so I can look at them and uh, describe exactly uh, what got me uh, into making that shot. So, for the first one uh, is the building shot. I really liked uh, the Frauenkirchen, uh, that's the big pointy building that you can see, and uh, how the street is linked to it, and also the fact that it has an older and a newer model cars. Uh, old German uh, standing in front, which is uh, really cool uh, in terms of uh, having this uh, street German vibe. Also, I have no, uh, I usually don't center things like that, but I really liked the leading lines, how they're uh, going towards the center, and Frauenkirchen is uh, exactly right there. Oh, sorry, that's not Frauenkirchen, it's uh, Warrenskirchen. Uh, I know that for the most English-speaking people here, that, it, that really doesn't matter because uh, most of you uh, have never been to Nuremberg. <laughs> but just for the da data to be correct. So the second shot was my person shot, and uh, there's not much to say. I just wanted to uh, show uh, this uh, guy that was. Uh, he was actually not begging, he was just sitting there and hoping for people to, to help out and I wanted to have this more uh, sad feeling from this photo. I put him on one side and uh, I intentionally uh, waited to have this huge distance between uh, the, the people on the left and the, uh, and the person uh, because it kind of represents uh, how people avoid uh, people with uh, who are less fortunate and uh, try to to look away most of the times. So regarding the movement shot, I really wanted to go with a panic shot. Sadly, my first shot, uh, there was uh, a person uh, in, in front of my uh, subject. So it got ruined. It definitely showed a lot more movement, but it, it wasn't that uh, uh, useful anymore. So I went with this one. It doesn't show that much movement. You can still see a, a bit of a movement, but what I like here is the retro vibe of the photo. Also the fact that the grandpa riding the, the bike looks like really happy and uh, it's really a, a nice positive uh, picture. So I'm not sure how much this photo fits in uh, in its topic, uh, because it might be considered an architectural photo more, uh, but it's still I like uh, how uh, crazy are the lines here. You you have diagonal lines, you have vertical, you have uh, horizontal lines crossing, and uh, it it did uh, look even more dramatic when I turned it into black and white and played a little bit with the contrast and the and the shades. Uh, so yeah, but we'll let you guys decide. Uh, if it's worth for a pick in this category or not. Uh, for the last shot, uh, my personal favorite one that doesn't fall into the other categories, I picked this really crazy shot. Uh, it, it, it's just like something out of, I think, well, maybe Fallout and mixed with uh, Chinatown theme. But you can also see uh, the, the German uh, part of the photo with the street signs and uh, all of that. It's just it just has so many things happening in this photo. It it, it is going crazy. It, it looks really interesting to me. So uh, it it's a typical street uh, street photo which that cannot be categorized in any other way. So that's why I chose it uh, as my uh, personal favorite one. So uh, really looking forward to uh, your votes. We will announce the winners in one of my next videos. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure to, uh, to subscribe, ring the bell icon, all the rest, you know the deal, this would really help the channel grow. And uh, in conclusion, I just wanted to say that I had 
uh, super fun making this collaboration with Jonas, really thankful for him to, uh, for traveling over 200 kilometers and spending an entire day filming with me and I hope to do it in the near future again, maybe this time in Frankfurt. So yeah, thanks for watching guys and see you on my other videos, bye!